Keynote has 12 standard themes inbuilt into the app. However, you can also go to the App Store and look up App Store Keynote themes as there are a number of developers who have created alternate themes that you can purchase. They're about 99 cents for a set of 10, so this is worth doing if you'd like some other options. It's easy to get bored with the same themes and your students will feel more inspired if you have more options. I'm going to start with the gradient theme. I like this theme as I think it gives a clear and crisp look. Each theme comes with inbuilt elements like the photo, heading and text. Any of these elements you can change at any time. So you can change the headings, delete elements, change the photo and add other elements in. But to start with, you do have to have an initial template to work with. And if you want to have pages, you have a number of options by tapping on the plus button to the left. So, if you want to add another title page, or a page with just text, you can do that too. There's a few options where you can have pictures and text with bullet points. You can have pictures alone, you can have text alone, and you can also have a blank page. So as you can see, there are quite a few options, but for the moment, we're going to start with the front page, which is this title page right here. I could change the picture by cutting and copying from somewhere else, or replace, which is what I'm going to do. So I'll open up my camera roll, as I have some pictures I want to use as I'm going to do a presentation on France. So I select the photo I want to use and you can see that the photo doesn't actually fit into my box very well. Well if I double tap I get a thing that's called a mask and that's at the bottom here. Using this feature I can stretch the parameters of the element to fit the picture or slide along to make the picture smaller or bigger. And once I've done that I can tap outside of the pic, I can tap on the picture again and then make the picture smaller or bigger by using the pinch and zoom technique. The picture is now good to go. I can also make some other changes to the picture by tapping on the paintbrush up the top right of the iPad. The paintbrush in your settings is where you can change anything to do with the element that might be pictures or text. So in this case, I'm going to change the picture element. I want to put a frame around the photo. I could use one of the presets or I could go to the style options. If I choose one of the presets, it gives me six or seven options. But I'm going to have a look at the style options instead. You can see that there are a number of frame styles that can be selected. Or you can also manually add a frame and select your style and color. In some of the presets you can change the colour but not in all. Coming back to the style options, as I said you can change the colour, style and width of your photo border. There is quite a variety of colour frame types to choose from, so you can make your work as individual as you are. There is also an effects tab where you can give the picture a shadow or you can choose a reflection. This reflects your photo for a different look. This is really good for nature and water scenes. The opacity of your photo can also be altered. As an example, I'm going to change the opacity and I'll make the photo bigger. I'll get it to fill the page a little bit and I'm deleting the subtitle and enlarging the main title. So that looks about right there. So as I said, I'm going to delete the subtitle because I don't really want that. And I'm going to make the main title bigger and rename it to French Art. I'm also going to move it to a place that to me looks better on the screen. French Art. And now I'm going to select all because I want to change the colour. And I'm also going to change the font style. So I'm looking for something a little bit more indicative of France. And I'm also going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so let's go for this orange colour. I think that looks quite good against the coffee background. And I'm also going to look for a different font. Let's have a look and see if we can find something. Okay, there's nothing perfect. So I'm actually going to go with Baskerville and italicise this font so that it looks more elegant and more like what I want. 
I can also choose bold so that the title stands out. Okay, there you go. Now I can also select whether I want it to be a heading, a subheading or normal text. I'm not going to bother with this because I'm happy with how it looks. I can also justify the text to the right, the left or the center. There are bullet options as well and in the layout you can change the margins and the line spacing. Now I want to create a new page. So I'm going to use the page that has a title and a space for a photo and some bullet points. So the first thing I want to do is replace the picture. And I use this option instead of deleting and then adding a picture because you don't have to play around with the sizing too much. It's much simpler just to select replace. So this is the image that I'm going to choose. And remember, by double clicking, I can get the entire image inside my box there. I think I'll take out the heading because we don't really need it. I'm going to let the picture tell the story instead. So in the bullet point section, I could list some famous French films. I'm not going to create an extensive list right now, but your students could do their own research and come up with their own list. For now, I'm going to pop in the films Amour and Amélie. So now that I've typed those in, I actually need to change the text to Baskerville for continuity. It's a really good idea to tell your students to stick to the same font, size and design so that there is flow in their presentation. The font is also too small so I need to make it bigger by going to the paintbrush setting and I'm going to, as I said, choose Baskerville and I'm going up to size 70 by just choosing those arrows to go up. And then I'm going to choose the same orange gold colour and I can change them both at the same time but I just want to show you again by repeating the process. So as I said I'm going to change this font as well to Baskerville, change the colour, use the arrows to go up, italicise and bold the text. And there we have it. So I want to frame my picture as it is a black on dark background. So to remind you, I'll go to Style, Style Options. I'm going to choose the same orange and gold so that everything looks the same. And then by sliding the width bar and adjusting the frame, I can make the photo line up to everything else. As you'll notice, there are some snap lines that help you guide where you want your photo to be. So I use that to guide me so that I have everything in the center. Let's create a new page so I can show you another thing that you can do with this program. I'm opening the template that has a photo only. On this template, you can choose a photo that will look good filling up the entire page. So what I'm going to look for is a photo that has the Eiffel Tower and the background of France. So there we go, perfect picture. So I'm not going to select a border this time. Instead, I'm going to turn down the opacity on the picture so that it blends into the background. I can also stretch the picture to fill the entire slide. Now it looks like the picture and slide are one. Don't worry about the photo hanging over the side as that won't show on the slideshow. Once I'm happy, I can just leave it as it is. Now I want to add a text box. So if I click on the plus button, this is actually the media tab. And the options here is to add media, which is photos, tables for facts, statistics and figures, charts and also shapes and it's here in the shape section that you'll find your text box. Now if I wanted to I could add a shape and then add the text inside the shape. I need to bring it forward so that you can actually see it and you go to arrange to find that like so. 
but I don't actually want a shape button so I'm going to delete it. The text starts off being quite small as you can see as I'm typing it. So I'm going to need to make it bigger in a minute. I'm going to write a heading, Art Capital Paris, as you can see. And I want to use the same orange gold colour, but the text is way too small. So I'll highlight the text I want to change. I'm going to use the same Baskerville font that I used in the other slides. Change my colour, and then using the arrows, make my font size bigger. I'd like this title up higher on the page. Make sure it stays on the slide and doesn't run off it. So I'm going to need to fix it. Move it over a little bit, that's better. Sometimes you have to go in and redo things, so I'm going to just need to make that bigger again and make sure I had it on bold as well and italicized. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. So hopefully this gives you another idea of how you can create a page in Keynote. You can also observe how you can add elements to your pages. Music